Hi everyone, welcome to my first official week of intermittent fasting. Glad you could join me. So, 16-8 means that in a 24-hour period, you're fasting for 16 hours and then you have an eight-hour window in which you consume your food. And to be fair, prior to this first official week, fasting seven days a week, fully committed, I did have a few days in which I kind of dabbled in intermittent fasting. A day or two a week here and there. During that time, I made zero changes to my diet, meaning that I ate with the family. If we went out to eat, I ordered an appetizer. I maybe had a dessert, the usual. And I also had my coffee with Stevia. Black coffee has been something that I have been dreading with intermittent fasting. I am an individual that needs to have some sweet coffee, some stevia, I'd like some almond milk. That's the only way that I can consume it. I also have been guilty of doing the spit take if I accidentally pick up something that hasn't been sweetened. So the thought of intentionally going with black coffee in the morning was something that I was totally dreading. Which brings me to my next topic, clean fast versus dirty fast. And let me preface this topic by saying that you can absolutely lose weight with a dirty fast. From what I have seen, the line between those that pull one way or another is pretty clearly defined, but that's not really what this video is about. I think that we all need to make the choice as an individual as to how we can make intermittent fasting work within our lifestyle. So that aside, dirty fasting is when intermittent fasters choose to consume food type choices and beverages that may provoke an insulin spike. There's a list that is generally associated with a dirty fast. These items include cream or milk that you would put in your coffee, a little bit of maple syrup or honey, anything that has artificial sweeteners such as flavored water, diet pop, stevia, or anything that contains aspartame would fall under this category. MCT oil, butter, coconut oil, bullion cubes, and even bone broth is something that depends on the source, whether it falls under clean fast or dirty fast. Other items include lemon in your water, sugar-free gum or mints, supplements such as collagen or those that you take pre-workout, and items such as sweet tea or matcha tea are also iffy. It really depends on what your source is. But like I said, there are those that are completely successful with utilizing some of these items and they lose weight. So that's not the issue. When I was first wading through all of the information out there, I found it reassuring to know that there are food items or flavored beverages that I could consume that could potentially help me get through the fasting period. That being said, the more research that I did, the more I realized that going with some of these items could actually make the fast more difficult to get through. So you may be asking yourself, how does consuming flavored water make fasting more difficult? Well, the reason being is that when we consume anything that is flavored, that has a sweetness to it, or that has a food-like taste to it, it can trigger an insulin response known as the cephalic phase insulin response. It is your body's anticipatory release of insulin, expecting that food is on its way. The extent to which the insulin is released varies on the individual, but it can make cravings kick in. It can leave fasters feeling shaky as a result and make intermittent fasting more difficult to adjust to in general. Something that really stood out and for me became a deal breaker was that utilizing some of these items can also stop you short of reaping the full health benefits associated with intermittent fasting. The release in insulin can bring autophagy to a halt. Autophagy is the body's rejuvenation process. It's a way in which it recycles cells that may be old or damaged. I'll discuss autophagy in greater detail in a later video, but to give you an example of one of its benefits is its effect on skin, 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 skin. Through its process of rejuvenation and upcycling, autophagy can help to diminish the appearance of loose skin that is associated with a large amount of weight loss. And given the fact that I have lost a significant amount of weight in the past and I plan to get back down to my goal weight of 140, 150, if I can utilize autophagy to help mitigate the loose skin, I am all for it. 
So for that reason, I have decided to solely stick with items that are on the clean list. And of course, there is stevia, which is a natural sweetener. When I first started doing intermittent fasting, I did put some stevia in my coffee thinking that if that was the only way that I was going to get it down, <laughs> I was all for it. But the problem is, is that I'm so used to my coffee being decadent almost that I didn't stop at just a few drops of stevia. Before I knew it, I was putting in 10 to 12 drops. So that had to stop. It was all or none. And I decided for the health benefits and why coffee it is. So items on the clean list, black coffee, water, unflavored water, sparkling water, and you can also add electrolytes to your water. Also green tea, black tea, oolong tea, tea that you can get from loose leaf tea. I should also add that there are some items that are in the gray zone, meaning that they may affect some individuals and not others. Items that fall into this category include herbal teas, ginger tea, peppermint oil that can help with breath freshening, cinnamon, nutmeg, a slice of cucumber, lemon, or orange in your water. Another item is apple cider vinegar. Also vitamins and supplements. This trial period was basically to see if I could hack it. So the logical question is, was it difficult? Yes. You bet. And what I found out is that we have habits that are so ingrained, it's difficult to circumvent our usual plan of attack. The usual things that we do as a family generally revolve around eating. Meaning that if we have a movie night, there's usually some popcorn that goes along with it. Even though I never really considered myself someone that is a big snacker, I was served with a dose of reality. Yeah, and I'm not someone that generally goes for something very sugary or high in carbs as a snack, <laughs> or so I thought. But that being said, when it's going on dinner time and the chips and salsa are sitting out and someone else is munching on them was something that I had to make a mental shift about and just exclude. Because with intermittent fasting, you're looking for a set amount of time in which to consume your meals. But not only that, it's best to cut out as much of the snacking as possible so that we can reduce how much insulin we have circulating in our system. So putting the snack down, walking away, telling myself that I wasn't going to eat it. And when my window was closed, it was closed was difficult. So you may be wondering what happened with my trial run. Absolutely nothing on the scale. I lost no weight whatsoever. And this was something that was a little challenging to explain to family members and to friends that asked about intermittent fasting. And the question that I would get is, why are you doing intermittent fasting? If you're not losing any weight, explaining to someone that has never really experienced a cyclic up and down associated with a high carb option or a larger meal is something that is challenging, but that is my reality with pre-diabetes. So when I was doing the intermittent fasting those days, I could tell the difference. During the time that I was eating, I was having less of that up and down and energy levels. And that to me was a good reason to stick to it. The next thing that I wanted to discuss is what you can expect from my channel. As you know, I work in the medical field. Does that mean that you're going to see 100% an exemplary form of eating? No. No way. And why not? Because I'm human. Because I didn't gain weight. Because I always chose to push away the cheeseburger or to overlook that cake. And not because I take my own advice 100% of the time. That's just not real. In fact, I have always told my patients that I will never 100% recommend that they cut out something that they truly enjoy. That's setting them up for failure. But I will aim to eat to fuel my body and to feel great. Not only that, but I will share with you my reel of shame, which includes food items that do not fall under the nutritious category. And why do I call it my reel of shame? Because sometimes type A individuals need to go with a little bit of humor when we slip up in place of beating ourselves up and so that we don't get hung up on things. And you know what? I give myself permission to indulge and to not feel guilty when I do it because I know that I'm working towards a healthier future and giving myself a little bit of leeway is going to help me accomplish that. 
So back to my first week with intermittent fasting, my big dose of reality. Here we go, it's day one. It's comical looking back and reflecting on my perception of snacking. I really didn't think it was a problem until it didn't really align with plans for intermittent fasting. I also struggled with waiting to open my window, thinking ahead as to what I was gonna open my window with. Also, what I could sneak in <laughs> during my window, which isn't the best way to look at it. But in reality, this is what was going on in my mind. That window is open, I'm going for it. And yes, when my window opened, there were times that I felt like I was completely a bottomless pit. That being said, I have been doing research. And yes, sometimes individuals end up eating a little bit more than what they had hoped for when first starting off with intermittent fasting. And I am no exception to that. But from what I have seen, this is something that doesn't last very long. Because in fact, another excellent health benefit of intermittent fasting is hunger cues that we learn to ignore come back. And I'm excited to discuss that more in a later video. The other reason that I feel I may have felt hungrier than I wished for during my eating window is because I didn't always open my window the best way possible. When your window is open, it's really easy to just grab something that looks tasty and down it goes. And that can include something that's a little bit higher in carbohydrates. So my big takeaway was focusing on protein, steering clear of those processed carbohydrates, processed foods in general, of course, a no-brainer, but it makes such a huge difference. It takes me from feeling totally satisfied versus feeling like I am looking for the next thing that I'm gonna consume. And thankfully, we do subscribe to HelloFresh. So for the most part, throughout the week, we do have nutritious home-cooked meals. And I'll share some of those here with you. I put in some time on the treadmill and I felt full of energy, which was a huge change for me. And after I had lunch, I didn't feel that I just wanted to sit down. I actually feel the opposite. I feel amped up. I feel full of energy. It's like I had a bunch of coffee, but I haven't. This is end of day four update. Like I mentioned earlier today, big change, big change in energy level. I felt so energized that I was just go, go, go the entire day. I feel like I clean the house from top to bottom and typically when I have a busy day, my batteries just feel drained by the end of the day. Today was completely different and really I'm ready for bed. I am so tired, but I feel like my energy was so much more consistent than it has ever been. And I'm really excited to see what tomorrow brings. Can I just say yuck? to black coffee? Yes, I can. And I'm sure that many intimate fasters can relate to my pain. I think that I'm going to invest in a coffee grinder because I have always gone with what I felt was really good organic coffee. But after this first week, I feel like there has to be something better. So if you have any recommendations as to where I can get something that is just really going to make my morning, please feel free to share that in the comments. So all in all, this first week has gone, <laughs> has gone well. And I say that because there's always a period of adjustment. That being said, I walked away this week feeling so motivated. And as for my weigh-in. Okay, here it goes. Now these numbers are no surprise to me, but they are definitely numbers that I haven't shared with anyone. So here it goes. So here's a little bit of a comparison. My Omron scale, as you can see, it's down 0.7 of a pound. This also calculates my weight, my BMI, my body fat, my muscle, my resting metabolism, body age, and visceral fat. So just to kind of give you an idea, here's my weight, here's my BMI, here's my body fat percentage, muscle percentage, my resting metabolism, my body age and visceral fat. So all super hard numbers to see. My first official weigh-in. 
So a small difference between the two scales. This one is slightly more down. There's weight, EMI, body fat percentage, muscle percentage, rusty metabolism, body age, and visceral fat. I lost two pounds. And I know that that's not a jaw dropper, but for someone like me that has lost 70 plus pounds twice and then has gone back to everything that worked before and is no longer doing a single bit of difference on the scale, to see that scale start to move in the direction that we so are working so hard towards is something that is hugely motivating. I was ready to just accept this is my life, which is really scary because I have prediabetes. Diabetes runs rampant in my family. And thinking to myself, that is my reality. That is scary. And to be frank, I indulged. I in no way, shape or form changed my eating habits this week. I have subscribed to so many different types of diets that going into intermittent fasting with the thought that I was going to deprive myself sounded like absolute hell. Restriction, you just get to the point where you can't do that anymore. And that's really where I had gotten. I didn't want to walk into a situation in which I felt that I was holding back. This is something showing results on the scale that I can see myself doing. I hope that you'll join me next week. I will be extending my intermittent fasting to 18.6, which is 18 hours of fasting, six hours in an eating window. I will be journaling this entire process. Yes. So you know exactly what I'm taking in and yes, <laughs> so I can hold myself accountable. You guessed it. So I will be sharing all of the good and all of the not so great. And of course, I will be letting you know what the scale is doing. So look forward to seeing you next week. Mm -hmm.